Can you live in your house during a remodel? This is a question that I get asked often, and unfortunately, there's no easy or correct answer, and it really depends on the type of work that you're having done. I'm gonna run through some different types of projects and give my opinion on if it's possible to live in your home while the work is going on, and at the end, maybe provide some options that you have. But first, a couple of quick notes. You will be in the contractor's way. No matter how much you try to give them space to work, curiosity usually gets the best of people, and they almost always will try to talk to the contractors while they're working to see what they're doing or check in on them or even to just understand what's going on. And what you're really doing is you're really just slowing them down and distracting them. Depending on the type of work, it will be incredibly dirty and dusty. And no matter how good of a barrier is put up between the area where the work is taking place and the rest of the house, the dust will find its way everywhere. It may even be dangerous. There's gonna be materials and equipment and tools stored in the home. There may be nails and screws on the ground. Walking through any construction site, no matter how small the project is, is always a hazard. And most homeowners treat it like they normally would treat their house. They're just walking through their own home. And this is a mistake. You need to be cautious and even more cautious if you have young children. A good way to approach your home turning into a job site is for the duration of the project, pretend that it's not your home and that you are not in charge. The contractor is in charge of managing the space and they are responsible for the safety of the workers and the visitors. And that's what you are in the construction site. You're a visitor. You need to listen to the directions of the contractor on where, you, where you're allowed to go and when. Most contractors start work early, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., it's pretty standard. But sometimes, you know, depending on the type of work, maybe they'll start at 8 a.m., but that's still pretty early for most people. And guess what? It's not the contractor's concern that you have to get ready to go to your job or that you need to get the kids ready to go to school. To serve you and their other clients best, they need to maintain an organized schedule. You may think that it's not that big of a deal if they start a few hours later so that you can get ready for your day, but you're wrong. And if you delay their schedule, it will not only take longer to complete your project, but then it will cost the contractor more money out of pocket and overhead expenses. And then you're just delaying the start of the next project and delaying the work that they can do for that family. So if you're gonna live in your home during any major construction work, you need to prepare yourself for the fact that there will be workers in your home or outside your home making noise and doing their job at a very early time. Depending on the type of work, you may be without a kitchen or without a bathroom or without power or water. Maybe it's for a day or a week or a month. But just think about that for a bit before you make a decision on if you're gonna live in your home or not. Imagine not having a kitchen for a month. And we're not just talking about limited access to your cooking appliances, but you won't even be able to have your food stored in your cabinets or to access your pots and pans and dishware. Sure, you could technically put those items in totes and store them in a garage or another room, and you can cook out on your grill for every meal of the day, but just think about how much of a hassle that will be. Digging through the bins to find stuff, going out on, onto your deck or your back patio to cook on your grill, washing your dishes in your bathroom sink, or even worse, washing them outside in a garden hose. I mean, you might as well go camping at that point. It will be very stressful for you. Think your normal day-to-day -day life is stressful? Then just wait until you don't have full access to all the rooms in your home and your belongings with all that dust and noise and chaos around you. If you are a person that gets stressed out easily or if your family or if your kids just can't handle that level of disruption, then living in your home during construction may not be a good idea. It will cost you more money and it will take the contractor a longer time to complete the project if you are living in the home. Again, this depends on the level of work, but if it's anything substantial, staying in your home will result in you spending more money on the project and it is ultimately going to take longer. This may be a result of less hours that the contractor has to work or interruptions that you cause 
Or maybe it's a result of phasing the work room by room or doing work in one section of the house and then moving and doing work on another section of the house instead of being able to do everything all at once. I have yet to meet a contractor who enjoys doing half of a job, leaving for a period of time, and then coming back to complete the other half. That is just not something that any contractor looks forward to. And not only does that waste time, but you run the risk of something going wrong. Just think about your own job for a second. If you're working on something and if you're in the flow and you, things are going good, then all of a sudden in the middle of that task, you have to stop and then go away from it and come back to it a week later or a month later and try to pick up where you left off and try to remember exactly what you were doing when you stopped working on it, there's a higher possibility that you're gonna make a mistake or not remember exactly what you were thinking. And the same thing goes with a contract. Let's review some project types to see if you can live in your home during, during that work or not. Starting off, exterior replacement of roofing, siding, windows. Yes, of course, you can live in your home during this work. I mean, depending on the types of windows that you're having installed, you may need to provide the contractor some sort of access to the interior and you may need to move some furniture around and out of the way, but for the most part, there will be very little disruptions to you. Replacing your heating or cooling system. Yes, you can live in your home. There may be a, a period of time when you're without heat or without air conditioning, but it's a, if it's a simple swapping out of the equipment, old equipment out, new equipment in, the disruption should be minimal. How about a bathroom renovation? Yes, I would say you could most likely live in your house during a bathroom renovation, just assuming that you have more than one bathroom. If that's the only bathroom in your home, well then you may be without a bathroom for a week or two weeks or a month. And so you may wanna find some sort of other accommodations. Let's say you wanted to add a garage onto your house or add a deck or add a screened in porch. Yes, of course, you can live in your home during that construction. Okay, how about a larger addition? Maybe you wanna put on a new primary suite or a kitchen expansion or adding on a larger family room. Most likely, you could still live in your home, but it depends on the type of the addition that you're putting on. This work starts to cross the line on if it's a good idea to stay. Let's say if you are building a new primary suite or an in-law suite on the first floor level and you're not touching anything else in the rest of the house. Sure, you can live there during construction. Everyone still has their space. You still have access to kitchens and bathrooms. There may be a period of time where you don't have power or water service, but that disruption should be minimal. The work can all be done with, without making the connection to the main house, right? You finish that work and then you make the connection last or, or towards the end and that reduces your hassle, but all of that is manageable. Now let's say you are expanding out your kitchen and family room. It starts to get to the point where you may be without a kitchen for several months. Let's assume that the first step of that project is demoing your existing condition. So then they can expand the area out and build your new kitchen. So day one, you're there, they're disassembling the kitchen and you're gonna be without any access to that kitchen for a long time. This is where I think it starts to cross the line on you should probably find a way to get out of that house. Now, what if you're completely gutting the home down to the studs, reconfiguring the layout, replacing the mechanical and electrical systems, and as well as replacing all the finishes, obviously, because you've gutted everything down to the studs. Sorry, but you cannot stay in the house at this point. You've got to go. Now, maybe if you have a two-story house and you're only gutting and rearranging and renovating the first floor, you could possibly stay, but it is going to be an awful experience for you. Okay, but what if you have a one-story home and you want to add a second story to it? Again, you're not going to be able to stay in this situation. Forget about not having access to a kitchen or a bathroom, but when a second floor is added, guess what the first step is? That's removing the existing roof and ceiling and then reframing a second floor. There is no possible way that you're going to be able to live in your home during this type of work. Okay, let's say you've decided that you need to move out during construction, what are your options on where you can live? Well, you could stay with friends and family depending on the amount of room that you need and the availability of space that your family has to offer. Just note that you're gonna be disrupting their lives as well, so you know, have some respect. 
You could rent out an apartment or an Airbnb. I mean, it might be tough to find an apartment that you can only rent out for three months or six months. So in that case, an Airbnb might be a better decision. You know, do a two month rental on Airbnb or, you know, if it's a longer project and if it's gonna be a year's worth of construction, then maybe you find an apartment to rent that gives you a little bit more space and maybe a little bit more affordable cost. The thing to remember here is if you're going to be renting out any space, you need to factor in the cost of that rental and any other moving expenses you have into your project budget. Depending on the size of your property, you might be able to rent one of those temporary housing trailers. I mean, there's companies out there that will rent you the trailer and they'll deliver it to your home and they'll park it in the front yard or the side yard. I mean, you're gonna need to have water and electricity hooked up, but this could be a decent option. I would say before you proceed with this option to check with your town or city to make sure that, the, that it's allowed. I've seen these trailers uh, have up to four bedrooms and each trailer sort of has a small kitchen, a living room and a bathroom and it could be a good option for you and your family. Another option you have is staying at one of those extended stay hotels, a residence inn or something similar. Now, this might get pretty expensive, especially if you're paying two to $300 per night. Um, I'm not sure if those hotels give discounts for longer stays, but if you're paying that amount per night, the cost could easily get to $10,000 per month. So, you know, maybe if you need a, a space for a week or two, that's a good option. But I would say any longer period of time and there'd be much more affordable options out there for you. Now you could plan it so that when the work is going on in your house, you and your family go on a vacation. Depending on how long your house will be unusable, let's say during a kitchen expansion, if you're away on, the, on your vacation during the time when the, the, when the kitchen is being disassembled and reassembled, then the disruptions to your life are minimal. I mean, the bad thing about this is you're not gonna be around to answer any questions or address any issues that come up. And yes, it's construction and issues come up on every project. So you may wanna choose a vacation spot where you have access to good internet service just in case you need to hop on a video call or send and receive emails and pictures from your contractor. Now the next option isn't for everyone, but if you're a property investor or if you're the type of person who always wanted to get into investing in rental property, this might be your perfect opportunity to start. Let's say you buy a duplex. You live in one side of the duplex while the construction's going on and you rent out the other side. And then once construction's complete and you move back into your home, then you can rent out both sides of your duplex. And this not only solves your housing needs, but you've created an income producing asset for you and your family. If you're planning to live in your home during construction, just make sure you have a conversation with your contractor early on. Make sure that they are aware of this so that they can plan their schedule accordingly, not just for your project, but with their other clients. Have this conversation with them before they give you a quote for the work. It would be pretty disrespectful of you not to tell them. If you do choose to stay in your home, prepare for noise, prepare for dust, Prepare for early mornings and a lack of privacy. Prepare for your family being unhappy and stressed out. 